answer your questions about the COVID-19 outbreak. The question today, how long can the coronavirus live on different services? Everything from the fridge handle or fabrics like cloth masks we wear. Cowboys Tammy Matos is live in the newsroom with today's answers. Tammy? Mary, so many questions because we're always touching our food, masks, and surfaces, which is a big part of the concern with COVID-19. Experts are still doing a lot of research, but they're also learning a lot to help keep us safe. I got this question on my Como News Facebook page. Can the virus spread from all the masks and gloves that people are using and disposing of into public garbages? Just wondering, once these go into the landfill, can it continue to spread and survive? That is a great question. So certainly the virus can live on surfaces for at least a few days, depending on the type of surface. We know that much. I think it's really important to understand that when we're using cloth masks in particular, or gloves, let's say, that we're wearing out into public, that we take those on and off in the proper way and that we clean them. A new study from the National Institutes of Health found the COVID-19 virus can survive up to three days on plastic and stainless steel. It was detected on copper up to four hours, on cardboard up to 24 hours. It can also linger in tiny particles in the air for up to three hours. Here's another question I got. We've been hearing that COVID-19 will stay alive in our freezer products for years. Is that true? Research is ongoing for COVID-19, but according to this study from the American Society for Microbiology, similar viruses like SARS thrived in low humidity and temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the same environment found inside a typical refrigerator. To be in a freezer for years would be highly unlikely that the virus would survive and then survive the thaw. But I think best practice here is just to disinfect the outside of everything. And the great news about freezer foods is there's no food going into the freezer just open without any packaging. Evergreen Hospital was ground zero for the treatment of the first critical coronavirus cases in the U.S. Dr. Ryan Pageant, an emergency room doctor at Evergreen Health, was on the front line. By mid-March, he was critically ill on life support with COVID-19. He was moved to Swedish Hospital, where he was treated with an experimental drug called Actemra. I think it would be fair to say we have treated patients with this medicine who seem to be quite ill and have gotten better. And that was the case for Dr. Paget. The drug, which is used to treat arthritis, is showing some promise in COVID patients whose bodies have a vigorous immune response to the virus. We do know that when that occurs, when the immune system is really maybe perhaps overactive, that can make patients very, very sick in a short period of time. Swedish says they've treated 40 COVID patients over the last two weeks with Actemra after a small Chinese study that showed 21 COVID patients with high levels of inflammation had been successfully treated with the drug. Well, I think it's still early to tell what role this medicine may have, um, but we've developed quite a bit of experience with it um, to this point already. For the Kirkland doctor, the drug lowered his inflammation levels and his oxygen levels increased. After a week, he was well enough to be taken off life support. Medical trials will eventually determine if this drug will save more lives. The best medical treatment really for any disease is to prevent it. When the weather is this good, it's hard to think of a better spot to soak it all in than Alki Beach. Clearly, everyone here has that same feeling. But with concerns surrounding COVID-19 still very much in play, this slice of sand will soon be closed. I get what they're talking about, but I don't think what we're doing now is really the answer. It isn't the only park being shut down by the city to help curb the spread. 15 of Seattle's hottest hangouts in all. That includes Capitol Hill's Cal Anderson. This is the only park that's convenient in, in this area and people are very respectful. And no more rollerblading, setting up that hammock or hitting the water at Green Lake. We know this puts a big burden on people because we all love the parks. Mayor Jenny uh, Durkin we... says with the Easter weekend approaching and crowds continuing to show up at these places, it's a move that must be done to maintain social distancing. And we've seen an uptick in gatherings and barbecues and picnics and soccer games. And we just can't do that. All neighborhood parks will remain open, so there's still a chance to get outside. We all want this to end as soon as possible and to be able to start the, the business of opening up our city again. Okay, so all of this goes into effect tomorrow night at this time, 11 o'clock. Those parks are set to reopen early Monday morning. The mayor says that the Parks Department is going to be keeping a close eye on things, monitoring all of this, and if warranted, those closures could go on. Back to you. Cole, thank you.